this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video on Lear Lee's P28 performance uni fans. Now these are interlocking fans that allow you to connect multiple fans up and set them up in your case. They also come with controllers, and there's a different logic depending on how many of the fans you're using and the way you'd set them up. So I want to talk through the setup process here with the black fans, as you can see, and the wiring logic for them. I'm using triple packs in this case, and you've got three packs of three fans. They're available in black or white, but the logic will be the same for both of them. It's also worth noting I don't have the RGB additional attachments here, but I will talk briefly about that in a little while. And I want to show you what's included in the box and the setup logic for installing it in the case and also installing them on a 360mm radiator if that's something you're looking to do. Now these Unifans use a similar logic to Lee and Lee's other Unifans in that they're interlocking, which means that you can click them together to reduce the wiring, which is obviously fantastic. They don't have RGB lighting, which means they only have a single cable for the power, but they are thick and are able to deliver up to 2,600 RPM in terms of fan speed and all the way down to 200 RPM. So they're quite quiet at the bottom end and loud and powerful at the top end. I'll leave the specs in the description. In this video, I'm going to be focusing mostly on the wiring logic and what you'll do with it. So a standard triple pack comes with three fans, as you can see, and then you have three power cables. You also have the controller cable and a cable to connect up two groups. And I'll show more about what I mean there. But you'll see a close up look here, those three cables in the middle, they're individual power cables. So you get three cables, which is enough to power each fan individually, which is pretty interesting because you actually are obviously gonna be interlocking these fans. So you won't necessarily need all those cables. So don't panic. You don't have an excess of cables, but you do have spares and that may well be handy. You can see the front of the fan obviously has that main logo on it. And then on the rear, you've got the P28 sign and the sort of readouts of the speed. The rear is where the air is going to be pulled through in terms of intake. So you want the front to be facing where you want to pull the air through from. And then the rear is where the air flows through into the case. On the side of the fan, you can actually pull these side bits off. You see that they can be taken off. Now you can purchase optional accessories where you can clip on RGB strips to the side of this. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those to show, but it is possible to do. I'll leave a link to the official videos in the description so you can see more on this. But essentially, you can add RGB onto these fans if you want to, to make them look more like the other uni fans. But if you want a sort of stealth build with understated design and yet yeah, obviously that high quality premium finish that you get with Liam Lee fans and these are a great option for that. They also have removable clips that you can see here where you basically can just twist and pull them off. Now those clips are used to interlock the fans together but if you're going to be installing these fans on a radiator where you're going to have tubes coming out of the radiator they might well get in the way so you might want to take them off maybe for a clean finish on them but generally speaking they're used to put them together. So for the Unifan logic you basically slip those clips in make sure the fans are facing in the right direction push the fans together and then slide them across and that'll click them together into place. You'll see on one side you have the little pins sticking out and on the other side you've got the gold contacts. Those things line up and then that means that you only need one cable for a group of fans instead of one cable per fan. And that's the great thing about these uni fans is the design makes it a lot easier for cable management in your case because you can just clip together multiple fans. So you can see a group here of three fans, obviously from the triple pack can all just be connected up and click together. And then you can just use this single cable to attach them to your system or whatever you're going to be using. I'll show you in a minute how you'd sort it out for a radiator, for example. It have a single cable connection that clips onto one end and that pushes down. Again, there's some gold pins. You can't really get this the wrong way around. You just basically push that in and make sure it's seated well in there. You've then got a nice single flat cable which gives you your power for the fans. And there are various options as to where you'll plug this in. So I'll show you in a minute, but just to show you from multiple angles of where you'd plug it in and how you connect it up. So this single cable is all you need to power those three fans and connect them to your system. There is no fan controller included in these uni fans. So unlike the RGB uni fans from Lee and Lee, there's no fan power and RGB controller, but what you do have is this instead. So this is essentially a manual control switch. So rather than connecting to your motherboard via USB connection, there's literally a little box with a button on it that allows you to switch between low, medium and high speeds in your, in your system. Now it has a little magnet on the rear so you can easily connect it up to your case and put it somewhere within reach where you can press it. 
so you can switch between those modes. It's not essential to install this though, because you can actually still control the fan speeds from your BIOS or from the motherboard software. And I'll show you more on that later on. But if you do want manual control over it, you do have this and it does extend the length of the cable as well. So now outside of the case, I want to demonstrate where you'd plug the fan cables in. You need to connect these up to system fan headers on your motherboard. So you can see, for example, SysFan3 here. Make sure these are PWM controllable connections, and we will need to adjust that setting within the BIOS later on to make sure that you can control the fan speed in the right ways via that button, for example, or via the software. So basically looking for system fan headers available on your motherboard that you can connect these up to. You should find multiple different points. This is a gigabyte motherboard that I'm using as an example, but you should find usually some on the bottom, maybe some on the right. There might be some on the top. Look at your motherboard manual and you'll find reference to them, but they usually mark sys fan and then they'll have numbers one, two, three, four, for example. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this setup is if you have two boxes of three fans, you actually have this included. So as standard in a triple pack, you get this additional cable. This is designed to allow you to connect up two groups of fans together and basically just daisy chain those up. So as well as having the three grouped fans together, click together here, you can then use this cable to connect them to as well. So if you have, let's say, three fans on the front of your case and three fans on the top of your case, you could, in theory, connect these together like that, run one cable from there to the other. However, it is worth noting that because there's no controller in the traditional sense, you don't have any power from this. So you'd be relying on your system fan headers on your motherboard to control the power for these. And I'm pretty sure that you wouldn't want to do that. I think that six fans is probably too many for a single system fan header. So I'd be wary of doing this. However, if you're using a fan powered controller or a PWM controller, as I am, and I'll show you in a minute, then this might be an option because if you have a system that controls that so it gets power separately, then that might be possible to do it. But to run six fans off a single system fan header would be inadvisable, I think, personally. Three fans should probably be okay, but the voltage required to run six off a single fan header may well be problematic, so I would advise against it, but you can do this, you can see that there's the logic for doing that. Now with other Lee and Lee fans, you usually have a control box, which is powered separately direct from your power supply unit. And therefore there's not as much of a problem with this, but this isn't the case here. All you have is this little controller, which gives you the connection to be able to control the fan speed, but it doesn't give any extra power in there. There's no sort of direct connection to your power supply unit. So it's still requiring on the juice directly from your motherboard and the amount of power that a motherboard can put out for those system fan headers is very minimal, so you want to be careful with how many you're connecting up. So my advice would be if you have three groups like this, connect them up to different system fan headers if you're not using a PWM fan controller separately in order to make sure that you're getting the power you need. Obviously, I'm showing an extreme here with three different groups connected up to three different system fan headers. Chances are you probably use three in your case on the front, three on the top, and maybe one at the rear. You might use slightly different logic you don't need to daisy chain three fans. You could just daisy chain two, for example, or you could use them on a radiator. So here's an example with a Corsair H150i Elite Capilux cooler. These are good quality fans for static airflow. They're designed for fast airflow, so they're perfect for installing on a radiator. They are thicker, so you make sure you use the standard included fans when you're mounting them on the case, but long radiator screws go through nicely into the fans and then into the radiator to hold it down in and there's a demo of what that would look like. So you're just installing the fans on there to so pull cold air through the radiator. But then the fans will connect up slightly differently. So in this case, I would use the CPU fan or CPU optional fan header on the motherboard. You can see them at the top. Those usually let out more power because they're designed to cope with CPU fans and all-in-one coolers and things like that. So if you connect those up, they should have enough juice to be able to power those fans and then obviously also control the fan speed to ensure that the radiator is cooled, the liquid's cooled, and your CPU is kept to a nice temperature during gaming and other high case uses. So you can see me installing some of them here. And there's a setup with a black H150i Elite Capelix on the top. And now I'm installing a fan at the rear as well. So obviously you can do these individually. The triple pack has three fan cables included with it. So you can install each fan separately. In this case, which is the Lian Li Lang Cool 216, there's also a PWM controller. So if you have something like this, which is basically a fan controller built into the case, it's able to control multiple fans, but it also does it with SATA power. So it has a power connection directly 
to the power supply unit so it's got its own amount of power you can connect them up there this then connects up to system fan headers and the motherboard and then gives you control that way and you can use that to ensure that you've got sufficient power for multiple fans with relative ease and it also makes things a little bit neater because you don't need to run as many cables from your fans to the motherboard but it's not essential as you can see you can run several fans to the motherboard with relative ease now in this case i'm installing multiple fans if you want to find out the performance of what they were like and how they got on in the 216 be sure to check out that video that i've linked to in the description with a review on this I swapped out the standard fans for these because I wanted to see how it got on and actually ran surprisingly quietly and really well as well and better than the standard setup that I had before too. But as I showed earlier, you can mount the little controller to the side of the case or the rear in this instance. Maybe you want to put it somewhere where there's a bit more easy access so you can just press that button. But once it's on, you'll see that the fans are running nicely. Now the next step is to go into the BIOS. So turn your computer on and then mash delete or F2 until you get into the BIOS and then look for your fan options. This is an important point of it, especially if you want to use that manual button to switch to controls. But also if you want to adjust the fan speed, you can usually do it in the BIOS settings. But what we need to do is go through to the system fan headers that we've connected our fans to, look for the controller mode and switch it from auto which is what it's usually set to to pwm pwm gives you control over the fan speed and allows you to adjust things a little bit more easily whether that's manually with the button or with software in windows you know it just allows it to recognize the speeds of these so you can see here as a demo for example with that little controller plugged in i can then just switch between those various modes and the fans will automatically ramp down or ramp up depending on what mode you've chosen and the quieter end is obviously much more pleasant on the ears, but if you want to get better performance out of it, then you'd put it into the high mode. Once again, though, you don't essentially need to use this little controller. It's just an additional extra. You can just plug the cable straight into the motherboard and then use software instead. So in this case, I'm using Gigabyte's control center software. In that, there's a fan control system that allows you to switch between silent, normal, and full speed, as well as manual. You can customize the fan curve so you can choose when the fans are going to spin up and the speeds that they're spinning up to as well. You'll see in the silent mode, for example, the system fan headers are running around 600 RPM. As I said, these will run at 200 minimum, and then you can go the way up to 2,600. So you can crank them all the way up on full speed to ensure they're basically running at 100% and giving you the maximum cooling. Things will get a little bit noisy there, but you can go in software, and it will vary from motherboard to motherboard depending on what motherboard you're using. But in this instance, you can see what you can do. You can either choose from those options or you can go in and manually set a curve and choose the different levels of where those fans spin up. So that's the logic of how to install the P28s. Hopefully it's been a useful insight into it. If you'd like to find out more about them and how they got on in the land call 216, be sure to come back for more. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.